Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What would our world look like with an endless supply of fossil fuels? I imagine that humanity would be more reluctant to find an alternative to this driving fuel source. I consulted my very good friend Google on this matter, and the results it found are presented here. So the bottom line is basically our world is destined to go, go, down, go down even quicker than, than it is doing currently. And um, so it is very important to find alternatives to produce certain essential chemicals which have their roots because we want to prevent our world from going down at a quicker rate. Now, to, the reason I'm standing in front of you is to discuss a very fascinating aspect of biochemical engineering, which is also directly related to alternatives. This topic is the metabolic flux analysis of the fungus Rhizopus oryza with the addition of citrate. If you don't understand what this means, when first I read it, I also didn't understand. So it should become clear during the course of the presentation what this is about. As we are all aware, our world does not have an unlimited supply of fossil fuels. A second concern is the detrimental impact these fossil fuels have on our environment. For these reasons, as I mentioned just now, it is really important to find alternatives to produce certain essential chemicals which have their roots in petrochemical processing. One of these chemicals is fumaric acid. Attractive properties of fumaric acid are its double bond and its two carboxylic acid groups. These make it a suitable substrate for chemical synthesis. Now you may ask yourself the question, what is this even fumaric acid? I've never heard of such a thing. Why should I bother to listen to this guy standing talking about something I don't even know how and if it impacts my life? That is a reasonable question. However, Fumaric acid has more applications than we could imagine. One of these applications is in the application of bread, especially sourdough and rye bread, where it is added as an instant flavoring agent. Another application is on our very favorite English muffins, where it is added to increase the dough porosity, which results in lower electricity costs required to make the, the muffins. Also, the sourness to weight ratio is increased substantially, which results in a lower price we pay for our very favorite English muffins. The next application is in the wine industry. Fumaric acid can be added economically to acidify wine with no detectable difference in flavor. Also, about 65% less fumaric acid is required than the currently traditionally used citric acid. This results in a lower price we pay per bottle of wine. A third application is in the plastics industry, more specifically unsaturated polyesters. Now that we've established that fumaric acid actually has some sort of use in our daily lives, we have to find an alternative to produce this chemical through renewable resources. The ideal candidate for this task, the fungus Rhizopus oryza. Now, basically, this fungus looks like this in a lab scale. And for those who don't know, mushrooms are also a type of fungi, and some of us like them on our pizza. <laughs> this fungus, like a lot of other fungi, lives in dead organic matter. It also infects carrots, pineapples, and mangoes. So the next time you see something hairy growing on your mango, you actually know, hey, wait, that's Reservus oryza. <laughs> and you can tell the person next to you if that person bothers. So the basic mechanism of this fungus is, the more glucose it consumes, the more fumaric acid it produces. Makes sense, right? However, currently the rate of glucose consumption is relatively low for this fungus. So if we want to make money from this process, which of course we all do, we have to convince it to consume glucose at a quicker rate. According to a group of Chinese scientists, this can be done with the addition of citrate. The objectives of this study were, to increase the rate of glucose consumption with the addition of citrate, and hopefully as a consequence, to increase the rate of fumaric acid production. Finally, we wanted to describe the influence of citrate on the cells. The basic fermentation path is as follows. All the fermentable carbon sources within Reservus oryza are metabolized to pyruvate. This is subsequently transferred to different routes depending on the fermentation conditions. So, where there is no oxygen, the pyruvate is mostly channeled towards ethanol, whereas under oxygen-rich conditions, the pyruvate is mostly channeled towards fumaric acid. The desirable reaction 
occurring within the cell is as follows. We've got our substrate, glucose, which reacts to form the desired product, fumaric acid. Due to the acidic nature of fumaric acid, some sort of neutralizing agent is required. If we would just let the batch stand there and ferment on its own without adding such an agent, the pH would dro drop so drastically that the cells would die, and of course we don't want that to happen. Something like calcium carbonate works pretty well. Advantages of using calcium carbonate are no pH control system is required during fermentation, which results in a lower overall cost, and also it results in the highest fumaric acid production rate. Finally, one disadvantage of using calcium carbonate is the possible precipitation of calcium fumarate. However, the currently accepted solubility of calcium fumarate in solution is 25 grams per liter, and the fumaric acid concentrations for this study were more towards 10 grams per liter. So in theory, this should not have a negative impact on the results. Why is this a disadvantage, you may ask? Well, if we form this solid, we have to extract the product, the desired product, from this solid in order to make profit. And so the overall cost will just increase if we have to do all that. And that results in a lower profit. As I mentioned just now, a group of Chinese scientists studied this fungus. The results they found are presented here. The decreasing dashed lines represent the glucose concentration, and the increasing solid lines, the fumaric acid concentrations. The red squares represent the control, no citrate added. The green triangles represent the 2 gram per liter citrate concentrations, and the blue circles represent the 1 gram per liter citrate concentrations. So from this data, it is clear that with a small addition of citrate, the glucose is consumed a lot faster, and as a consequence, more fumaric acid is produced. Also, it would seem from this data that there's an optimum citrate concentration somewhere between 1 and 2 grams per liter, or perhaps even less than 1 gram per liter citrate in solution. To give you a better idea of what everything looks like, we will now consider the cell development. The cells were grown in a specific growth medium for two days. After this time, they were transferred to a fermentation broth, essentially a cocktail of chemicals. So then fermentation was allowed to proceed for five days. During this time, samples were taken on a daily basis and analyzed with a high-performance liquid chromatograph. Also, you will see from these images that the solution clears up as the fermentation proceeds. That is because the fermentation, the neutralizing agent gets consumed. For one citrate concentration, 2 grams per liter, the cell development was slightly different. There, there was seen to have formed pellets instead of the usual mycelial cell formation. This was an indication that the citrate had some sort of influence on the cell development. First of all, we have a look at the concentration data for the glucose. Here we've got the control, no citrate added. You will also see the standard deviation of the mean at each sampling point. In comparison to this, the 2 gram per liter citrate concentration really didn't perform any better. The 0,5 and 1 gram per liter citrate concentration consumed the same amount of glucose after 69 hours as the control did after 96 hours. This is an improved overall glucose consumption rate of 36%. The 1,5 gram per liter citrate concentration consumed the same amount of glucose after only 56 hours compared to the control. This is an overall improved glucose consumption rate of 68%. Also, this citrate concentration consumed 23% more glucose at the end of fermentation. Now, where rates are involved and different products and substrates in biochemistry, a common technique often used to, to describe the data is the accumulative rate distribution. So in this case, we wanted to see how the substrate, glucose, splits into the different products, ethanol and fumaric acid. In other words, how much glucose goes towards ethanol and how much glucose goes towards fumaric acid during fermentation. Another requirement for this cell is respiration. So respiration is its source of energy, and obviously, if it wants to survive, it needs energy, so some glucose will go towards respiration. First, we see the control. The bottom section represents glucose towards respiration, the middle part, glucose towards ethanol, and the top part, glucose towards fumaric acid. Now, in comparison to this, we have the 1,5 gram per liter citrate concentration. The most obvious observation from this is the initial overall glucose consumption rate of 2,6 times compared to the control. Somewhat slightly unsettling, though, is 
that actually less glucose goes towards fumaric acid, the desired product, compared to the control. And perhaps as a consequence, more glucose goes towards respiration compared to the control. This is not really desirable. Next, we have a look at the fumaric acid data. Have a look at the data. <laughs> I, I didn't find that funny, but OK. You will see from this data that there's no real improvement on the control. So the control is the white line. That's no citrate added. And the only one that performs better is the 0.5 gram per liter citrate concentration. But also, it really doesn't perform that much better compared to the glucose concentration profiles. A possible reason for this, other than the just mentioned now additional respiration, is the precipitation of calcium fumarate. So uh, respiration inside this cell re indicates energy requirements. So the more respiration, the more energy the cells require. Now citrate is a highly unlikely cause for additional energy requirements within these cells. So the more probable reason is the precipitation of calcium fumarate. To have a look at what this looks like, we have our calcium ions from our neutralizing agent, and we've got our fumarate ions from our product, fumaric acid. That's the compound you see in the right, top right. Now these two come together in solution, and they form the insoluble precipitate calcium fumarate, which precipitates out of solution. Now, the problem with forming this solid is the analysis tool used for this study what could only detect liquids and could not detect any solids. So should there be any additional or any solid solidification or any, should any product leave the solution as a solid, in this case the desired pr product fumaric acid, it could not be accounted for due to the analysis tool required or used. In now, also on this graph, we have the currently accepted solubility of calcium fumarate of 25 grams per liter and the hypothesized solubility of 13 grams per liter. Now, I've only worked in the lab for about four months and things already started to get a bit boring and repetitive. So I decided to change things a bit. So to prepare the fermentation medium, two solutions were prepared. The one solution contained the glucose, the substrate, and the other solution contained the micronutrients and the citrate for the citrate experiment. These two solutions were sterilized, and after sterilization, they were mixed together to form the, to form the fermentation medium. For this particular experiment, I decided to add the citrate to the glucose, to the glucose solution instead of the micronutrient solution. And I also sterilized them separately, and then after sterilization, they were mixed together to form the new fermentation medium. The results were really interesting. The HPLC analysis indicates the formation of some sort of unknown sugar, or should we say uncalibrated sugar, during sterilization. Also, interestingly, the remaining glucose concentration added to this concentration of this unknown sugar amounted to the expected total concentration of glucose at the beginning of fermentation of 100 grams per liter. The glucose concentration profile was also really interesting. So we see the largest overall glucose consumption rate for this study. It is an increase of 96% compared to the control. I mentioned a figure of 68% just now. 96% is a good improvement on this. Also, the fumaric acid concentration profile is really interesting. It indicates the largest titer, the largest concentration for this study. 28% larger than the control at that time instance. Also indicated on this graph are the currently accepted solubility of 25 grams per liter and the hypothesized solubility of 13 grams per liter of calcium fumarate. In conclusion, the influence of citrate was clearly seen with the formation of pellets instead of the usual mycelial cell development. Secondly, the rate of glucose consumption increased substantially as much as 96%. Finally, the rate of fumaric acid production did not increase that much. This was ascribed to the precipitation of calcium fumarate, which could not be detected by the analysis equipment used. And the two limits, the currently accepted solubility of 25 grams per liter and the hypothesized solubility of 13 grams per liter of calcium fumarate were both indicated in the study. And this latter solubility is strongly motivated by these results. The obvious recommendations that follow is firstly to determine the real calcium fumarate solubility under similar conditions as for this study. 
And secondly, to investigate this differently done experimental procedure, since the results were really interesting. To end off, I leave you with a quote from the famous boxer Henry Tillman, who also briefly starred in the Rocky V movie. The quote is as follows. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. <laughs> <laughs>